In this video tutorial, we're going to introduce the topic of gears and simple gear trains. Now what we have on the screen here is a diagram and we have two gears. We have gear A and we have gear B. Now underneath the diagram, we've specified how many teeth we have on gear A. There's eight teeth on the smaller gear. And on the larger gear, gear B, we have 32 teeth. Now we've also specified here that the input is gear A and the output from the gearbox is gear B. So basically what's happening here, we're turning gear A, let's say in a clockwise direction, and as a result, gear B is turning in an anti-clockwise direction. Now the reason why the number of teeth on each of these gears is important is because it's going to affect how quickly each of those gears turn in relation to each other. Hopefully you can see from the diagram that we're going to need to turn gear A more than once in order to get one full revolution of gear B, and we'll have a look at how that ratio can be calculated in a moment. Some of the other symbols we're using here, capital N represents rotational speed, and our rotational speeds are given in revolutions per minute, and we also have capital T for torque, which is given in newton meters. So in the top right hand corner, we have some equations that apply to gears, and the first one is for gear ratio. Now there's a number of different ways of calculating gear ratio and one of them is using the number of teeth on the output divided by the number of teeth on the input. If we know the rotational speeds of the input and the output we can also calculate the gear ratio. But just take care here because when we use number of teeth we do number of teeth on the output over number of teeth on the input and if we use rotational speeds it's input over output. I've written a third equation which is true only when the gear system is 100% efficient. So if the gear system is 100% efficient, then we can also use the ratio of our torques, torque out over torque in, to get our gear ratio. But more often than not, a gearbox won't be 100% efficient, so we need to use the formula below for efficiency mu. Now before we can calculate or use the efficiency of the gearbox, we need to be able to calculate the power because efficiency is output power divided by input power. As we said before, if something's 100% efficient, then all of the power we get in, we get out. But if there's any inefficiencies in the system, then we lose power when we go from input to output. The way that we calculate power for a rotating shaft is P equals 2 pi times the rotational speed times the torque divided by 60. So here we have a formula for the power, and we can use that formula to calculate the power of the input shaft, the power of the output shaft, or the efficiency depending on the information that's given. So let's start with a simple example. And in this example, we're going to use gear A with eight teeth, and we're going to use gear B with 32 teeth. So first of all, let's begin by calculating our gear ratio. Our gear ratio is the number of teeth on the output, 32 in this case, over the number of teeth on the input, eight, giving us a gear ratio of four. It's probably worth mentioning that the ratio of these diameters for these gears will also be four. Obviously the diagram's not drawn to scale here, but what we have is something called the pitch circle diameter, and the diameter of the gear directly relates to the number of teeth on the gear. But returning to our example then, we now know that we have a gear ratio of four, and we know that gear A is our input and gear B is our output. Now let's specify the rotational speed of gear A. Let's say that the rotational speed of gear A is 150 revolutions per minute. Now we already said previously that if gear A is rotating 150 times every minute, then we would expect gear B to be rotating less. It's a larger gear one turn of gear A doesn't cause a full revolution of gear B. So we can return to our second formula that stated that the gear ratio was the input speed over the output speed. So in this case, we know that our gear ratio is four and we know that our input speed is 150, but we don't yet know our output speed or the speed of gear B. Now what we have here is a simple linear equation. So we can multiply each side of the equation by nB and then divide each side of the equation by four. 
So what we get in this instance is NB is 150 over 4, which equals 37.5 RPM. So as we would expect, the rotational speed of gear A is four times the rotational speed of gear B because we have a gear ratio of four. So now let's assume that our gearbox is 100% efficient and let's specify that we have an input torque of 15 newton meters. Well, if we have an input torque of 15 newton meters and providing our gearbox is 100% efficient, we know that the gear ratio is the same as T out over T in. If we rearrange that to make T out the subject, T out is just the gear ratio multiplied by T in. And we have all of this information. The gear ratio is 4, T in is 15, giving us an output torque of 60 newton meters. So providing the gearbox is 100% efficient, the output torque is going to be four times the input torque. So although the speed decreases by four times, the torque increases by four times. We're gaining mechanical advantage there. Okay, let's change the context slightly. And let's introduce an efficiency. Let's say our efficiency is 85%. Now what that means is we're only going to get 85% of the power out when compared to the power that we put into the system. So we're going to use these numbers and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the new output torque. Well first of all we can calculate the input power because we know the input speed and we know the input torque. Therefore the input power P in is going to be 2 pi m a t a over 60. And it's simply a case of plugging our numbers in there. So we have 2 times pi times 150 times 15 over 60. Note that we use the rotational speed in RPM. So running that through the calculator gives us 235.6 watts. So going into the gearbox, we have 235.6 watts. However, our system isn't 100% efficient, so we're not going to get the same amount of power out. We have a formula which states that the efficiency is P out over P in, which means that P out is the efficiency times P in. Now we have something we can work with because our efficiency is 85%. Just take care here because we need to express that as a decimal. 0 0.85 times the input power of 235.6 is going to give us our output power. And our output power is just 200.3 watts. As you would expect, the output power is lower than the input power. So we have one last step because what we actually want to calculate is the output torque. So let's clear some space. Now to calculate the output torque, we need to use our output power that we just calculated. We just found that the output power was 200.3 watts. So we can return to our power equation because we know that the power out is 2 pi m subscript b t subscript b over 60. Now we need to rearrange this to make torque the subject and whilst it looks complicated we can just follow the steps of rearranging an equation. The first thing we need to do to each side is times by 60. So we get 60 times p out equals 2 pi m subscript b t subscript b. And the last step, again, although it looks complex, what we can do is treat this as a block because 2pi is just a number, nb is just a number. 
So where I put those brackets round, all we have is a number or a quantity. So now we can write TB, the thing we're trying to find, equals 60 times P out, all divided by 2 pi n subscript b. OK, now let's plug our values in. We have 60 times 200.3 over 2 pi and nb, as we calculated earlier, was 37.5. Just take care to ensure that all of that is on the top of the fraction and all of that is on the bottom of the fraction. And running that through the calculator gives us 51 newton meters. Now if the goal is to calculate the output torque and we know the efficiency, there is another formula that we can use. Because earlier in the video we calculated the ideal output torque. And by ideal, I mean the output torque neglecting any losses. Well, if we want to find the actual output torque, what we can do is multiply that ideal torque, which we found to be 60 newton meters, by the efficiency. So what we can write is TB actual equals TB ideal times the efficiency as a decimal. So what we would get is 60 times 0 0.85, which also equals 51 newton meters. Now it's useful to remember both methods because this will only work if it's the output torque we're trying to find. If we want the input and output power, or we're trying to calculate the efficiency, then the previous formula is more appropriate. OK, next we'll look at a gear train with three gears where the middle gear is known as an idler gear.